Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk to you about one of my favourite pieces of music of all time, which is La Primidi d'Enfant by Claude Debussy. The Halle will be releasing a new album of Debussy's music and The Afternoon of a Fawn is on the CD. And I'd really like to talk to you about the original staging and choreography of this piece as I really feel like it changes the way that you listen to the music. The ballet was choreographed and dominated by 22-year-old Nijinsky and was premiered in Paris in 1912 by the Ballet Russe. Nijinsky's choreography exceeded the limits of traditional ballet and as a result it was unlike anything the audiences had ever seen before. Nijinsky's new trends caused quite a stir and at the premiere there was a lot of outrage and it proved to be just as controversial as the Rite of Spring. The ballet is about a young fawn who is half man, half goat, who walks down to the lake and finds some nymphs who are shy and intriguing and he proceeds to flirt with them and chase them. I was personally very surprised when I saw the choreography to this piece for the first time as the music is so fluid and evocative and sensual and the movements are so angular and stylized. It really wasn't what I was originally expecting. The use of pauses by dancers where there would have usually been continuous movement was groundbreaking. This juxtaposition of angular choreography with the fluid music was the birth of modern ballet. The Ballet Russe, which was run by Diaghilev, made use of the time when the Imperial Ballet had shut for the summer. He used those dancers and took them to Paris so he could stage his own ballets and performances. Whilst the dancers were in Paris, they went to the museums and the art galleries. It was in the Louvre Museum when Nijinsky saw Greek vases, which were the inspiration for his choreography to La Primidie. He wanted to recreate the artwork on these vases on the stage. The stage was impressionistic in style, with splashes of muted greys, earthy browns and greens. The floor was black until the mound which the fawn lies upon, which was green. From there, it was green until the back of the stage. The stage was made thinner by these draped cloths to create an effect of a two-dimensional image reminiscent of the Greek vases. The ballet was presented in bare feet and sandals, which went completely against tradition and convention. The dancers' costumes were designed to stand out against the muted background. Nijinsky wore a cream bodysuit with brown patches to represent the coat of the fawn. He had a short tail, a belt of vine leaves and a cap of golden hair with two golden horns. Nijinsky's ears were extended with wax to look pointy, while his makeup was designed to make his face appear more goat-like. The nymphs wore white muslin tunics decorated with patterns in red and blue. The nymphs had minimal makeup except for pale pink around their eyes. They wore wigs made of golden rope which hung down in long strands. The work opens with a solo flute as the curtain rises and you can see Nijinsky lying on the mound, holding himself up on one elbow and holding a flute to his lips. Much of the movement takes place with the dancers passing each other in parallel lines. The dancers each take a pose and become still, imitating the pictures on the ancient vases. The music is suggestive of a hot summer's day in an exotic line and the dancers move steadily to match. Nijinsky was an exceptional dancer, but he was not an exceptional teacher. He really struggled to tell others what he wanted them to do, and he taught through demonstration rather than explanation. The short 12-minute ballet required 90 rehearsals as it was so complicated, and the dancers really struggled to adapt to these new movements. Nijinsky had difficulty accepting the limitations of other dancers and he expected them to be able to perform and dance as well as he could. The dancers thought that Nijinsky had gone completely mad and that the ballet was doomed to fail. They really didn't enjoy dancing it as it broke so strongly with tradition. The work culminates with a very controversial scene with the fawn making love to a scarf that one of the nymphs has dropped. It's really graphic and quite animalistic. This caused uproar and as a result, the police were brought in for the performance, which was sold out. On the opening night, the ballet was met with mixed reviews with lots of booing. There was an announcement on stage to say that it was going to be repeated. And after the second performance, everybody stood up and cheered. 
This work is so special for most musicians, but particularly for flautists, as the flute features so prominently throughout the piece. It's so iconic, yet so nerve-wracking to play this, and it really feels like a rite of passage when you do. The whole piece opens with the solo flute line playing by itself, and it's really difficult for the breathing, as it's meant to sound so relaxed and languid, but it's such a struggle for the breath. It is tradition to play the opening phrase in one breath, but Debussy actually writes a breath mark halfway through. Conductors do request for it to be done in one breath, but ultimately it's up to the flute player to decide what they want to do. This very special Halle recording, which will be released on the 3rd of July, is particularly special for me. On the recording, it's Catherine Baker playing the principal flute part, and she was principal flute of the Halle for 14 years, and she was my flute teacher. Playing this piece sat next to her was such a huge privilege and an experience I'll never forget. There's a gorgeous passage in the middle which dovetails between the first and second flute, which I love playing with her. This recording of Lapin Midi was actually the last thing that we got to do sat next to each other as colleagues in the Halle. So I'm really looking forward to the 3rd of July to have another listen to such a special recording. Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon.